Now, the suspended acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, again on Thursday appeared before the Justice Ayo Salami led presidential panel sitting inside the old banquet hall of the presidential villa Abuja. This is the fourth day. The former chairman will be appearing before the panel since his first appearance on Monday. He has remained in police detention since his first appearance. Also appearing before the panel on Thursday, however, are the Commission's Secretary, Olani Peku Olukoyode, and some directors. Joining us live is Tunde Kolawole, legal practitioner, to take a look at this. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, my sister. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. All right. Do you approve of the president's action in suspending Magu uh, to allow for open investigation? Well, let me say right away that um, no one is above the law if it is seen that uh, Mr. Magu has committed an infraction. There is nothing special about uh, suspending him. Ordinarily, I've always been in support of people who engage in fraud. Because if you keep them in their offices, the possibility that they will think of for state investigation or destroy vital documents is very, very high. So because of that, I don't see anything wrong in suspending him. Because even in ordinary work environment, when people are found to have uh, committed acts of misconduct, most time what happens is that they are suspended, pending the outcome of investigation and whatever punishments are prescribed in the statute books. You say that whether he comes out innocent or not, this might just be the end of the road for uh, Magu as the uh, chairman of uh, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. What do you say to these comments? Well, it's not necessarily, it should not necessarily be so. It is uh, what I would describe as a Nigerian phenomenon, that a man is suspended of not me, he shouldn't be able to come back to his job. If at the end of the investigation, he is found not to be culpable, we should leave it to him as a moral question, whether after being suspended and after being humiliated, it is still appropriate for him to go back to his job. If on the moral ground he feels he doesn't want to go back to his job. We should leave that decision to him. But we should not say because a man has been suspended in the course of investigation, he should not be allowed to go back to his job. He's perchance. He's not found wanted. What would you say is the implication of the ongoing investigation of the person who is supposed to be in the forefront of the anti-corruption fight of this administration? What, what impact is it going to have? Well, it is a tragedy of monumental proportion for the ruling party, which is the APC. It is also a tragedy of monumental proportion for Mr. Magu himself, and it is a tragedy for our country. For Mr. Magu, a man who has been catching teeth, so to say, to now be the one that is being scrutinized for stealing, it raises a lot of moral and very weighty, very weighty moral questions. For Nigeria as a country, it may not be difficult for us to convince any external body, any external government, any anti-corruption agency to continue to deal with the EFCC as a corporate entity if the air is found in this kind of very, very strange circumstances. Furthermore, it will be difficult for us to convince other countries to continue to repatriate money 
that is now being eaten in those other countries. Because the question will be asked, even when the money is repatriated, the people in government, the people heading the corruption agencies, are likely at the end of the day to further misappropriate the fund. So of what use is it repatriating any money back to Nigeria? All right. Now for the APC, this is a very, very big dent on the ruling party, a very, very big dent on the ruling party. You will recollect that during the Eighth Assembly, when the names of Mr. Magu was forwarded to the National Assembly for confirmation, the people in the Senate refused to confirm him because they alleged that he is not clear, because they alleged that he is corrupt. So if at the end of this investigation, it is found that Mr. Magu is culpable, that becomes a very, very serious embarrassment for the government that has insisted that Mr. Magu should be confirmed and that Mr. Magu should continue to act as the chairman of the EFCC. Mr. Kolawale, do you think that the consideration as per the embarrassment that this could bring to the administration's anti-corruption fight will play a role in what becomes of this investigation? Should it happen, um, what are, I mean, what um, outcome would you expect to see? Well, uh, let me say that uh, the, uh, the parties who are all involved in this are already engaged in a very dirty fight in the market square, a very naked fight in the market square. And everything is likely to be thrown overboard. They are not likely to reserve any weapon in this very, very dirty fight. I suspect that no matter what happens, somebody somewhere who insists on an indictment of Mr. Magu. That is what I think is likely to happen. Because as it were today, we already seen statements being released by the people in authority that they are doing this to prove to the world that nobody is above the law, that nobody is above punishment, that no institution is sacrosanct. For them, it is a publicity stunt. And it may not necessarily be, they are not necessarily doing it in the interest of the country. They are doing it because they think that the regime might gain some publicity traction from this investigation and indictment or humiliation of Mr. Mago. But let me also add that we must be careful, I mean, we must pay attention to the role that has been played by the Directorate of Security Services. Under our law, the State Security Service has no power whatsoever to participate in the, in the arrest and investigation of Mago. Their role is strictly reserved for the preservation of internal security and protection of public officials. So what has that responsibility got to do with the arrest of Mr. Magu in the manner in which they have done it? We must also remember that Mr. Magu's problems started from the DSS. They were the ones that submitted the report to the National Assembly that Mr. Magu is corrupt. All and right, that's um, not to be confirmed. Uh, Mr. Kolawale, hmm? um, yes, uh, for the, uh, in the interest of time, please, I I'd like you to respond to this very last question. Um, All right. Nigerians were sort of taken aback with the whole investigation, the commencement of the whole investigation by the presidential uh, panel. Um, with all that has played out, do you see Nigerians getting a feedback as to the results of the investigation when they do conclude um, the process? We might, we might get a feedback, but it is going to be a feedback that is probably going to justify the action that has been taken by those who want Mr. Magu out of the EFCC. I say this because the panel that has been set up to investigate Mr. Magu is an illegal body. It is alien to our law. 
the laws of the Federation does not allow the government of the day to set up any special panel to investigate Mr. Magu. If Mr. Magu has to be investigated, it is the Nigerian police that should investigate him or his own colleagues in the EFCC who are not, who are not found to be involved in whatever corruption schemes Mr. Magu has been engaged with. All so right. this special body that has been set up by the Secretary Army of Government is totally alien to our law and is not likely to serve the end of justice or the interest of justice at the end of the day. All right, it is a self serving panel um, that the Nigerian uh, people should not expect much from. Uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawale, thank you very much uh, for the insight Thanks you provided on the conversation. Do have a lovely day. You too, sir. Yeah.